my channel. Today I'm going to talk about budgeting and budgeting apps. What an unsexy topic. I know, I know it's so unsexy, but it is literally the tool and the practice that will transform your life and your life outcomes. I only say this because literally about 10 years ago, I did not budget. And I went to the Dame Ramsey University and they forced us to budget. So I budgeted for the first time. And what I realized was I was spending $800 more than I thought I was every month. I was like, oh my God, I was, I literally spent $800 more. That for some people's like a rent payment, I was spending extra because I just was not managing my money well. I asked you today, if you manage your money, if you had a company and you hired a CFO and he managed your company money the way you manage your money, would he have a job today? I mean, would he have a job tomorrow? For many of us, the prob the answer is probably no. But from that, I learned so much. And it actually, from what I learned from Dave Ramsey University, was it literally made me an obsessive compulsive budget tracker. That sounds so crazy. I know, right? Like most people would never get to that degree. But you know how some people like obsessively track their macros? Well, I obsessively start tracking every penny I spend. In fact, I even got my husband to start doing it. So um, I don't I don't speak about this theoretically. Um, I speak about this from personal experience. Honestly, budgeting has given me so much financial freedom because it has allowed me to also budget that pleasure items because life is a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. So we got to take care of ourselves. And how we take care of ourselves is budgeting to take care of ourselves. So let me talk really quickly about the categories of spending. Then I'm going to talk about some of the apps I recommend and, and some that I found success with personally um, and uh, I'm just going to end with just how important it is to budget if you, especially if you want to become a homeowner, right? I'm coming from that perspective. Okay. So first let me start with, um, okay. First let me start with, um, budgeting categories. That's right. Almost forgot my train of thought there. Um, okay. So I'd recommend about 40% to go towards your housing expenses. Okay. That's like the biggest part of your budget, right? Uh, that includes utilities um, that should include your, your whole whatever cost to live, like rent, utilities, right? If you have home maintenance, fine. If it comes to a little over that because you, have, you put away 15% of your monthly mortgage or rent payment towards home repairs, that's fine. Um, I would recommend putting 15% of your monthly mortgage payment towards unforeseen expenses, okay? That means if your mortgage payment's $1,000 a month, I would put away $150 every single month for unforeseen expenses because, you know, as a homeowner, like your furnace breaks down, your hot water heater breaks and it floods the freaking basement and it gets soaked up into the wall, all kinds of crazy things. Like these things have actually happened to me. You need to budget for that because let's say, oh, this happened to me actually the other day with one of my rental units, which is, um, oh, my insurance said they wouldn't renew my insurance unless I replace the roof. Replace the roof? That was $5,500, okay? If I had not budgeted religiously that 15% over those years, I would have been scrambling, okay? So if you're going to be a homeowner, take budgeting for home improvement very seriously. Otherwise, you're going to be scrambling because if I did not get insurance... My bank, I don't know what they would have done. I do not want to find out, okay? So 40% towards rent living. Make sure you include 15% of your monthly payment, not of your monthly earning, but your monthly payment into saving for those repairs, okay? I would say definitely take 10% if you can to pay yourself first. That's what I call it. It's a savings account for your long-term future. If you can afford to pay even a little more than 10%, I like to call it saving for my golden goose. That is like saving to truly be financially free, right? Um, that's outside of other like normal savings. But um, yeah, then I would say other other ancillary spending 30%, right? Between food, transport, um, include car insurance in there. Um, that total comes to 70%. And that extra 10% could be, you know... Um, ancillary spending other things everybody's budget might look slightly different but those are my recommended categories okay 
Um, if you have student loans, that ancillary definitely goes to student loans. Um, I wouldn't recommend paying more than 15% of what you earn every month towards your student loans. If you're paying more, you should definitely consider getting onto an income a driven repayment plan. We can directly help you with that and figure out what your best repayment options are. Um, we can do that at myloansense.com. Happy to help you do that because there's no way you can afford to pay more than 10 to 15% and save your long-term financial goals, especially as a homeowner. Imagine if your roof freaking breaks down, you know, you just need that money, right? Um, now let's talk about budgeting apps real quick. So, um, I'm going to talk, well, first of all, let me talk about Mint. Mint is like so popular. I started my life with Mint, okay? But what I don't like about Mint is it, it connects to all your bank accounts. It's super convenient. But the convenience factor also makes it ineffective for me. Like for me, just like dieting, I need to log my macros. I need to log my workout. I need the activity of like accountability of saying I did it, whether it's texting a friend, writing it down, whatever, right? The same why Mint doesn't work for me is because I don't have that accountability. If you just connect to my bank account, I don't realize I spent money, right? The same thing with like paying on your phone, right? If you like pay on your phone and beep it, it's like you're not even recognizing your paying because you're just lifting the phone going like that. Um, I try to like get away from these psychological mind tricks that make us realize we're not spending money. Like we, we just don't realize it. You know, I hate that because it takes away my empowerment I have over my money. Okay. So for me, I love the, the, the app called Money Manager. This is what it looks like. It's super simple. You, um, I literally log every penny. Um, that sounds insane to many people, but the reason I like it is because with every penny I log, I get to see how much I've spent in each category and how much I've spent for the month. So I start the month with my salary and I see it going down, going down, going down, going down. And I get to be aware, very aware of what I'm spending. As crazy as it is, as it is it's just become habit for me and my husband. So we know to the dime, to the penny, what we have spent. And for us, it's actually a way to keep us sane and it's also a way for us to be able to budget to treat ourselves as well okay so it comes on like both sides okay um then the last app i want to recommend um is YNAB. you need a budget i've never used it um it's highly highly rated they use the concept of zero waste budgeting that's all i know about it but it has a great community. It has great financial literacy. They did not pay me to sponsor this. They did not sponsor any of this content. I, I, I just have heard how great they are from many of their users and I can see the level of engagement in their community. So like engagement, I've heard um, of the level of engagement in their community as well as how much they believe in financial literacy. The concept of zero-based budgeting is giving every single dollar of your budget a job. So if that sounds like your style, definitely check them out. Um, but last and not least, I want to talk about, I, I mean, I guess I kind of started the whole thing with lecturing about the importance of being a homeowner, but I, this is what I do want to say. If you're about to become a homeowner or desire to be a homeowner, whatever your monthly mortgage plus taxes and insurance payment is going to be, even if you're not paying that much in rent now, to try to live under that budget because what you don't want to do is buy something way more than you can afford and then struggle to live under that budget, okay? So that's what I would recommend. So for example, when I bought my last house, um, I was told by my lender that I could take out literally almost two and a half times of what I ended up borrowing. I did not personally feel comfortable taking out such a large mortgage because I did not want to worry about, well, what if I lost my job? What if I can't? I don't want to worry about, oh, can I save enough money because my mortgage payment is so large, you know? So just... Just because you qualify for something doesn't mean you should take it and you should do some serious self-reflecting. Also, the more money you take out, the more your house is to maintain, the more maintenance money you're going to have to save. So it all compounds, right? Um, so just keep all that in mind. Um, I would recommend definitely if you have not bought a house yet and interested to start budgeting now. Do not wait until you have a conversation with a lender to think about what your total monthly budget's gonna be because guess what? Taxes and insurance always inevitably go up. So it's gonna go up, right? I started my mortgage in my house here in Michigan at like $800 plus taxes and insurance. 
And now like taxes and insurance have gone up. So it's over a thousand. And like, I hear it's going to go up and up and up. And, you know, it's just good to recognize that and not to stretch your limits right at the get go. That's what I would recommend for you. Um, if you have student loans and feel hopeless or feel like, oh my God, how am I ever going to afford a house? How am I going to ever afford to move out of my parents' basement? Whatever your situation is, know that we're here to support you. I'm going to leave a link down below. So if there's ways we can help cheerlead you on so you can achieve your financial goals, we are here to do that. Um, thank you for joining me here. If you like the content, I'm sharing, which will be everything from education to my own personal story to my own entrepreneurial journey, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.